had a lot of problems with the way that we've been treated and the pay rate that we have, a lot of discrimination. It's pretty bad. Seven seventy-five an hour wasn't doing it. Many workers have bills to pay and they don't want to be the working poor forever. We deserve a fair share. At Starbucks, there's there's a real issue with the the number of hours and the the consistency of hours that workers are are assigned or permitted to to get. Um, every single worker at Starbucks who is not a system manager or a manager is a mandatory part-time employee, which means that we are never given more than 40 hours a week. We're never given 40 hours a week, and on top of that, if we go into overtime. Um, it's a it's a disciplinary offense. We can we can receive a write up for that. So we're supposed to um, have to police our own hours and, and make sure that we don't exceed that number. Um, this is an incredibly uh, widespread issue at Starbucks. Not only the the amount of hours that we get each week, but the consistency week to week. You can have 31 week, 15 the next week. When it comes down to paying your bills at the end of the month, you really don't know how much money you're going to have in your bank account. Get to the game, get it off the chain. And then, of course, there's the big lie. The big lie is the Starbucks healthcare message. Now, if you stop many people on the street outside here, you say, well, you know, at least they have healthcare. The wage might not be right, but at least they have healthcare. So if we maintain an average of 20 hours per week every quarter, we have the ability to qualify for purchasing the company's health plan. Only 43% of Starbucks employees choose to purchase the company's health, uh, health plan. Um, it's, the number is 47% for Walmart, just to give you a little bit of a, a relative statistic there. And the 43% for Starbucks employees includes assistant managers and managers. So if you're looking at the statistic for baristas, shift supervisors, and bussers, that statistic has to be less because managers and assistant managers have far more consistency in hours and receive a far higher wage, so meaning that they uh, have better ability to pay for the company's health care. In May 2004, workers at uh, the 36th Street and Madison Avenue location um, declared their membership with the Industrial Workers of the World. We got union cards together, we got them signed, we took them to the National Labor Relations Board and filed a petition, and we talked to workers about a union in the store to the other workers, and they were with it. They decided to join the IWW Local 660, and that's how it came about. After the election, idea fell through were bribed to not be in the union. Starbucks had uh, anti-union busting campaigns. They had a guy dress up as a manager and come to the store say he was a manager. And uh, he would buy the workers pizza, he would give out Mets tickets and gym passes. We were getting pizza on an everyday basis at the time. And uh, they were threatening workers that they could lose their jobs if they joined the union. Benefits will be taken away, union dues will have to be paid. A bunch of phony baloney that were given all the workers at 36 in Madison. Ever since we came out, they always 
you know, pick on us for any little thing. They want to enforce rules that have never been enforced before. We're not in the business of filling bellies. We're in the business of filling souls. Oh, now, come That's, on. No, no, wait a minute. That's too, but this is a company. This is a corporation. <laughs> okay, come on. It is a corporation. You're blowing smoke now. No, I mean, this is how we feel. You might say, okay, they're full of crap and, and, you know, this is how we feel. We're in the business of human connection and humanity, creating communities in a third place between home and work. Uh, Sarah Bender was laid off because of union activity. I was laid off because of union activity. Pete Montebalo had some problems because of union activity. Joe Agins was laid off because of union activity. And um, they said I got laid off because of line voids and shortages of the till, which were totally untrue and probably rigged on the computer by the managers and management. Um, the, our case that we had been continuously filing unfair labor practices of all this and it finally went to trial and surprisingly Starbucks settled the case on the first day um, meaning that we basically won all the things we were asking for which was my job back, Anthony's job back, um, the right to wear union pins on the clock. We won three wage increases from our organizing on the shop floor in the community we have now, for union members, much more secure hours. We're generally getting the hours we want. And we've also made some modest safety improvements in the area of repetitive strain uh, injury. So the message is that organizing works. It's powerful, despite what the right wing wants us to believe. The union actually helps out. It's not like all those other business unions that, like, it's all about paying your dues and you got to go through all these people. Like, the union is kind of like your family. Like, you get to know everybody. And... It's like whenever I have a problem, they're always there, and we really stick together and we try our best. What we're trying to do here is more than just get higher wages or get consistent scheduling. It's really about um, fighting for a better life, both on and off the job. Um, and, you know, right now there are a lot of Starbucks workers involved, but this is really, for me, I see it as what are the jobs out there now? A lot of them are retail and food service, and why are we expecting such low, tr such poor treatment? Um, you know, we're all working hard, we're not bad people because we work these jobs and I think we deserve a good life from it. So um, certainly if you're interested in making your life better, um, get involved, get in contact with us, starbucksunion.org, um, yeah, or iww.org. Okay. I'm doing it.